Hello, and welcome to the Toledo According To podcast. I'm Riley Runnels, assignment editor of the Toledo City Paper, and I will be interviewing some of Toledo's most influential and impactful residents as they walk us through what Toledo means to them. Every episode will feature a new guest talking about their favorite Toledo attractions, businesses, restaurants, and experiences, with the hope of our audience learning more about the guest and finding more gems of Toledo. All right, I'm here with Jordan Strack, one of Toledo's favorite community members. How are you doing, Jordan? I'm great. I'm great. I, I appreciate you saying that. Being a favorite <laughs> community member is pretty cool. I of like Of course. That. Well, so Jordan has always lived in the area. So talk a little bit to our listeners about how long you've been here, what you're doing now, and a little bit about you. Yeah, so uh, born and raised in Northwest Ohio, went to Maumee High School, went to BGSU, Um, I've never left the area. It's always been home and I've never really wanted to go anywhere else. Um, So yeah, I've been here forever. Uh, I worked at BCSN. I started at BCSN as an 18 year old freshman in college. Uh, Worked my way up, worked at WTOL for 14 years. And now I'm working for the Mud Hens and Walleye. So it's uh, it's very cool. I actually interned with the Mud Hens uh, back in like 2006, 2007 while I was in college. So getting to come back here, uh, it's been kind of a full circle thing for me, so it's been pretty cool. Yeah, and tell everybody a little bit about what you do here with the Walleye and Mud Hens. Yeah, so I, I'm in a storytelling role, so it's, it's very similar to what I was doing. I'm, um, I'm still turning stories, I'm still doing on-camera content. Uh, in the world that we live in, everybody's looking for more content and trying to figure out how we can deliver that. So yeah, it's been fun. It, it, they've given me some, some creative freedom, which I appreciate. And uh, it's been awesome. I'm very, very happy and I'm, I'm having a ton of fun for sure. Awesome. That's great. And we love that we still get to hear from you in a sports capacity in the community. And because you've lived here for so long, I think these answers are going to be a little bit more close to home and more interesting for our listeners because you've pretty much seen everything in the area. Yeah, I feel like I have. I, I hope I have seen, done it. Yeah, I've been around for a long time now. For sure. So let's kick it off with what place in Toledo are you most proud of? Uh, it's a hard question, but I, I honestly, I think just like in the totality of the downtown area from, from when I was a kid. So I remember going to Toledo storm games with my dad when the sports arena was across the river and, um, people were, you know, not real sure about coming downtown and all those things. And then when the, the mud hens moved downtown, it obviously triggered everything. Um, the revitalization of downtown and to see what, what's happened with the arena and um, even Promenade Park and what Prometica's done in the entire downtown area, it's awesome. Like you, you drive down Summit Street at night right now, it looks so pretty with all the Christmas lights and all these things. So I'd say probably the downtown area as a whole, um, I'm obviously a little biased. I think Fifth Third Field and the Huntington Center are, are pretty darn cool. Right. Um, I, I'm a sports guy at, by trade. So yeah, I think those two places are just landmarks that everybody that comes to Toledo you have to come to a Mudhens game. You have to come to a walleye game. It's it's just like a rite of passage. Absolutely. And so I know you also are a bit of a foodie. So mm-hmm. tell us the best meal that you've ever had in Toledo and where it was from. Wow. Uh, I know it's a tough that's question. A really, that's a really <laughs> tough one. So You can say a few if you yeah, have a couple. Okay, okay, good. So what I'm going to say is... Um, can it be outside of Toledo? Is that okay? Like in a suburb? Yeah, of is course. Is that fine? Of course. Okay. So... J&G's has always been like one of my favorite places in the world. My grandma uh, worked there for like ever. Uh, so growing up, we'd always go to J&G's out in Sylvania and I, the pizza was so good. And I, I love like their, their rice. <laughs> for some reason that rice like takes me back to my childhood. Uh, my grandma would like make it by the pan for me. Uh, so I love J&G's with all my heart. Um, but I mean, there's so many good places. I. I am actually, I'm, I love food, obviously, but I'm, I'm a little picky. I do love Rudy's though. So Rudy's is a Toledo staple. Tony Paco's is obviously a Toledo staple. I'm a, I've always been a Rudy's guy, maybe because in South Toledo where I grew up, we had one around the corner, so I always would go to it. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe those are really boring, simple answers. No, but like, they're perfect. Those are, those are like my, my two of my favorite Toledo staples that, that I always talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And talk a little bit about what your favorite annual event in Toledo is. And again, all of these answers can be about suburbs sure. or different okay. places surrounding okay. the community. Well, I think I think lights before Christmas or after Christmas uh, is, is is I mean that's 
that's a simple one. I've been doing it since I was literally born. Right. Um, and, and again, I, I grew up in South Toledo, um, the Heather Downs Burn area. So the zoo is always just right down the trail. It's a very quick drive. We go to the zoo all the time. Um, so that's, in terms of annual events, I would say the zoo lights, Mod Hens opening day has become the biggest party in the city. Mm -hmm. um, so those are probably two of my, I guess, the things that I have to do every single year, I guess. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And talk about, you know, there's a lot of local businesses in the area and a lot of different kind of avenues that people take when opening new businesses. Mm -hmm. But do you see any gaps in our businesses in the area? Is there a business that we should have that we don't have yet? Well, as you know, um, I obviously was, was begging for Raising Cane's to come to Toledo <laughs> for a very long time. That finally happened. If thankfully. you don't follow Jordan on social media, follow him and <laughs> you can look at all of his tweets about Cane's. Yeah, like I, I, I was pushing on, on social media for, for years uh, trying to get uh, Raising Cane's here. And we finally got it out in Perrysburg, which was awesome. I was really happy about Um one thing that, that I have noticed working downtown for so many years now is I wish there were more lunch places downtown. Um, there, I, I am like learning and discovering like more places all the time. There, you know, there's there's a few. There's your staples down here. Um, love Dirty Bird, love Blarney, um, even Michaels down the street. Uh, it, there's a place called Ice that I don't think most people even know about. Right by the Huntington Center, I love Ice. Um, there, there's a bunch of little places and, and berries over at Imagination Station. I would like to see, I don't know, maybe some more lunch options downtown would probably be the only thing. I don't know. I, I think we have a, in, in Toledo, I think we have such a perfect mix of big city feel, but also like homey. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. I think it's such a perfect mix that, that I, that's why I, I, I've always stayed. I've never needed to right. go anywhere else. I love it here. So I've never really wanted to go anywhere else. It's interesting. Most people who come on this podcast talk about how Toledo is that city feel, but it's a smaller market, so it doesn't feel oversaturated in any way. And it feels like there's a lot of room for people to appreciate the businesses that are here, yeah. but still room to improve, which is really cool. So I think that's a very good answer. Lunch Places Downtown is for sure a staple. So please tell me about your favorite piece of local art or architecture in the area. Oh gosh, uh, that's a hard one. Um... So, okay, I actually, this is going to sound crazy, maybe, I don't know. Um, there's something very nostalgic for me about the bridge at the zoo. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, you know, as, you, as a kid, you walked over it, like, you had the people driving under you, and I always thought, I, I, for some reason, I always thought that was the coolest thing. Between that and then, I'm so glad they brought back the tunnel oh, at the yeah. zoo, mm -hmm. because when we were little, we'd go in and we'd yell and you'd hear the echo. And I'm so glad they brought that back, but I don't know why, but my mind, the first place it went was to that bridge over the trail at the zoo. Yeah. I, it's a, I don't know if it's, that's even art or, arch, I mean, it's architecture, I guess, but like. It's art too. I love you it, You know, yeah. they have all the footprints and paw yeah, prints absolutely. and things in there. It's absolutely. Cool. And, and like you have, you know, you put the quarter in, you can look through the thing. And right. That's cool. Um, the, the Fifth Third building is iconic to me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love that big glass structure. I think that's so cool. Um, and, and you know what? I'm going to circle back to your last thing. I would love, and, and, and I will give the city credit, they have built up on the east side, um, the Glass City Metro Park, mm -hmm. and the docks, They're on, all those things are under construction. I would love to see the docks be the place to go in Toledo. Yeah. I, I think it has so much potential over there. I would love for that to be like the ideal spot for anybody coming into town to walk through there, go over to the Metro Park, eat downtown, all those things I think are, are, there's so much potential and it's building, it's growing and it's, it's fun to watch. Right. Yeah. And especially for you, you've been here your whole life. Yeah. So watching it kind of, you know, from conception to creation with stuff like the Glass City yeah. Metro Park or other developments over there, it's really cool. It, it's, and I, let me say this, it is, it's surreal because I remember where, where the apartments are and where Old Bag of Nails is and where the Glass City Metro Park is. Mm -hmm. That was where the sports arena was. So, like all my childhood memories of sports and going down to storm games and everything, that was a, that was an arena. That like that's where I, I actually scored my first varsity hockey goal in the sports arena over there. Wow. So like I love I always have that special place when I like I can remember going over the MLK Bridge, 
And sometimes, you know, it's up because boats are coming through or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I just remember so many little silly things like that right. from my childhood. And But, like, going up over that bridge, over the MLK Bridge, and then turning left into the sports arena, that was, that was always, like, my favorite thing. So I knew I was going to do it with my dad, mm -hmm. and I knew I was going to a hockey game. Yeah. Like the, so I, I love that area, that little spot for me. It's just nostalgic. Absolutely. For sure. And so... You know, I think that there are a lot of places in Toledo that kind of capitalize on the hustle and bustle of everything going mm -hmm. on. But where do you feel most calm when you're in the area? Um, I, I think uh, maybe, I don't know. I, at, at my parents' house, I, I think mm -hmm. is like, that's home. They, My parents have lived in the same South Toledo house since I was five years old. I'm 38 now. So for 30 something years, it's just going back into their neighborhood you know yeah. it's just like that always is like that's home right. like that's that's always been where I've gone that's where my family's been so like I feel really calm and, and of course out on the golf course uh, we have so many good golf courses around here yeah. and I love to golf in the summer um, I'm very calm out on the golf course until you know I hit a bad shot or whatever and then I'm, <laughs> then I'm a mess then it's all ruined then, no yeah then I'm a mess <laughs> but yeah like those are my I don't know those are kind of my little zen places I, I will say in side cut mm -hmm. um, I love going to side cut because um, you know, again, going back to being a kid, like we'd go there for fireworks, we would go down there for picnics, we'd go all, I mean, so walking through side cut is obviously a place that I, that's, I, I think calm always kind of resonated with me. Yeah. For sure. Is there a particular golf course in the area that you like more than others? Uh, of course. Um, so Inverness, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not a member at Inverness. Um, I would love to be a member at Inverness. Um, I'm going to need to hit the lottery first. Inverness, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening, hit me <laughs> up. Um, no, I, I love Inverness. It, it's my, it's it's the best, it's one of the best courses in the world. For sure. Um, obviously, like it, it's it's an incredible track. Um, I, I love Belmont out in Perrysburg. Um, Riverby, which is right by me. I live in Waterville, so Riverby is right around the corner from me. I love playing at Riverby. Um, I said Belmont. Those are, those are my, and I actually love Highland Meadows just because of, you know, being there for so many years covering the, the LPGA and, and going out there and playing in the media day events and things like that. Those have always been, that place has always been really cool. And I like it because it's so perfect. It's beautiful, but like you can actually also score there, which makes me happy. Um, so it's not like an impossible track. So I love, always loved Highland Meadows too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you're running around a ton all over the area. You live in Waterville, you work downtown, but tell us what street you drive or walk on most often, if you had to guess. Uh, the trail, for sure. Really? Yeah, because, um, because if going from Waterville to my parents' house, I have to be on the trail. Uh, there, there's just basically one way to get there and it's down the trail mm -hmm. going through mommy so and then you know sometimes I'll take 75 going to work most mornings um, now that now that the construction's cleared up on 75 I, I even tweeted about this the other day it's like it, it's amazing it's like, very pleasant now yeah, 75 <laughs> is like cool it's all three lanes wide open we're we're cruising people are moving there's no orange barrels it's terrific so right. yeah that's uh I would say between 75 northbound between uh you know, Waterville and downtown, and then also the trail. Those are probably the two streets that I drive on the most, I'd say. For sure. And this is another hard one just because you have lived here so long. But what is the best time you've ever had in Toledo, and where was it? Wow. Outside of my daughter being born? Outside of your daughter okay, being born. Okay, because, I mean, ob listen, that's <laughs> Obviously, ob that's number I, one. I think that's obvious, number one, over at Toledo Hospital. I'll never forget the day. Um, actually, Shout out, Kennedy. Yeah, right? <laughs> she's, she's terrific. I, I remember that day specifically because she was born and then that night uh on that september 15th she was born the tigers were playing out in oakland and they clinched a playoff spot that night and i had a little baby tigers jersey that i put on her and we watched the tigers clinch the division to go to the playoffs and the celebration and everything in the hospital room that night <laughs> so like I, that's obviously number one uh number two probably and i'm gonna go back to my I'm gonna go back to like 1993 when the storm won the Riley Cup. Mm -hmm. That was that was one of my. I remember it's crazy because in '93 I'm you know seven eight years old whatever it is. I can remember almost everything about that night when the storm won the Riley Cup. Um, it was so much fun. I remember Mark Deasley scores the game winning goal. Everybody there ran onto the ice, which I've never. I still to this day I've never seen that kind of a celebration in hockey 
ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see court stormings, you see people run on football fields, but fans running on the ice and being part of the celebration of the team, like that doesn't happen. Right. Uh, so that was a really cool thing, and that was probably, and, and just everything that went along with it. Um, <laughs> I have a picture of me and my dad along with Ian Duncan, who played on the team. We were at Consol Tavern. My dad took me as an eight-year-old into Consol Tavern uh, <laughs> in the bar, which nowadays, like, looking back on it, was like, oh, my God, Dad, what are we doing? <laughs> but, like, I have a picture of me and my dad and Ian Duncan with the Riley Cup wow. uh, from that night, which was... That's so special. So, yeah, it was. It was awesome. And I, um, like, that was... That, th those days were what kind of shaped my love for sports and hockey and all those things. Yeah, For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And because you've been here for so long, there might not be an answer to this, but is there something that you've always wanted to do in Toledo but have not yet done? Ooh. Uh... Gosh, I don't know if there's anything I haven't done in Toledo that needs to be done. Um, I haven't been to the museum in forever. Yeah. Like, I haven't... I, I used to go all the time, but, like, I haven't been to the museum in a long time. I feel like going back now, it would be like going for the first time. It's been that long. Yeah. And we have such a cool art museum here that I need I need to get over there. Definitely. Uh, it's on the, the 2024 list. Uh, we'll get, I'll get there for sure. And there's always new exhibits and everything too. Yeah, so even the old yeah. stuff, you can yeah. always see new stuff yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. If there was one thing that you could change about Toledo, what would it be? The reputation Toledo has. Um, I, I wish that I could go and, and change the way that people talk about this city because it is so different than what people portray it as. I, I think that there are people that are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get out. I can't wait. This, that, the other thing. And there, there's a negative connotation around the city that is, it's it's just not true. Right. Toledo is an incredible, incredible place. Like we have, people don't realize how much we have right at our fingertips. We're an hour from Detroit. We're two and a half from Columbus. We're two hours from Cleveland. You can make a day drive over to Chicago. There are so many things about where we live that are incredible. Yeah. We've got a world-class museum. We've got a world-class zoo. We've got unbelievable professional sports that are treat. These are minor league sports that are treated like they are big league sports here. Um, our high school sports are incredible. We've got two universities, major, major universities, literally in our backyard. Mm -hmm. On top of having Lords and Owens and Adrian College right up the road and Defiance. I mean, we have so many cool places right here in the history of Toledo there's so much that people don't understand like uh, even the history through Waterville where I live like the Underground Railroad went right through where my house is mm -hmm. and there are so much there's so much history and there's so many things that people don't even know about that I wish that's the one thing and that's not a physical thing that I can change and it's impossible to change but I the reputation that Toledo has I would love to just like wave a magic wand and everybody just have a fresh look at it because this city has done so much and it's changed so much and it is in such a good place that I wish everybody would, would understand it the way it is. Yeah. Well, and I think there's people like you who do have a platform who are working to change that mm -hmm. reputation. So, I mean, props to you for doing that and for staying here and showing no, people how cool it I is. It's al awesome. I have always been the number one cheerleader for our city and I always will be because I I just think that it's it's a special place. I really sure. do. I love it here. Absolutely. So this question is a little bit more vague, so you can answer it however you understand it. Yeah. If you knew you could get away with it, what oh. would you do? Oh, oh wow. Riley, that's a, that's a loaded question. I know. Um, <laughs> if I could get away with it, what would I do? And just, just in the city? It doesn't have to be. If you want to relate it to the city, you can. Okay. It's a very vague question, but I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, probably have my own private jet. Like, I don't know if it's like stealing a private jet. Do I have to steal it or? You or? just want to be like Taylor Swift. I that's, get it. That's what it is. I, I want to be, I, and, yeah, I want to be Taylor Swift actually. That's it. I wave the magic wand. If there's one thing I could get away with a beat. No, um, I guess having, because I love to travel. And I think the, the number one thing that prohibits me from traveling is the money to go. Definitely. You know, like. I don't know, get away is that getting away with it like get away stealing with stealing some plane tickets. stealing yeah. yeah stealing or stealing a plane and having it endlessly <laughs> yeah um i don't know if that, like i don't know if I, it's a terrible answer but i'm not uh, i don't know that's a i've never heard that question 
but it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Right. it is. It's definitely one that we like to ask just because everyone kind of understands it differently. Yeah. Um, but I do want to take a second just to set the record straight for those of you who don't follow Jordan's social media. Jordan's track is a self-proclaimed Swifty. Huge Swifty. Huge yes. Swifty. So yes. just letting everybody know, if the Swifties are listening, you've got Jordan's track on your side. Always. Always. <laughs> yes. Always. So Jordan, what do you think the best view in Toledo is? Um, a couple of them. Um, I actually love um, the Heights is a, is a really cool one. That, that's a that's an easy one. That's a that's a cool, really cool space. For sure. Um, I actually love in our Fleetwoods building that we've got here in downtown. Um, I love the view of from the top of Fleetwoods because you can go off the back deck and you can look over across the river and you can see the docks. You can also come up to the front side of it and you can look right down into the ballpark. Um, and there's there's so much going on. You can look right into Hensville Park. You can look into Fifth Third Field. I I didn't even know about the view until I started working here. That view though is spectacular. It is spectacular. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's also worth noting that the view from where we're sitting right now of yeah. Fifth Third Field is incredible. Yeah, I I like to come up here once in a while. Like I'll come up and eat lunch up here. We're um, it's the it's called the 1896 room, but it's like up in the roost. So for people that have been here. It's up in the roost. It's in the back. We're, and we can look over the ballpark, and it's a yeah, it's a fun place. Like the fact that I get to come work here every day, and I just get to look out at a baseball field, like that's pretty it's freaking cool. Absolutely, that's yeah, cool. awesome. So, talk to me about when you're away from Toledo. What can you not wait to have when you get back? Ooh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything like one thing specific. Um, I love berry bagels. Mm -hmm. God, I love berries. It's I really, incredible. Berries is the best. And, and shout out to everybody over there because I love them. They're great people. Um, I, berries is one thing that like I normally can't go two weeks without having it Like mm -hmm. when I'm here. So like if I leave, I come back. Like, I And having one downtown has been... Dangerous for the yeah, bank it, account. I was say, <laughs> it's good and bad, yes. Right. Uh, because I can have it whenever I want it. But also like it's closed on Mondays and like it's one of those things like you want Chick-fil-A on Sundays. Right. Can't have it. I want berries on like every Monday. Can't have it because it's closed. Can't have it. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean I can go to Sylvania or whatever, but like I love berries. That That is a, and I probably should have mentioned that my, my first time around. I love that place. Mm -hmm. really well, good. it gets a special shout out yeah, this sure time. That, so make, sure right. that makes, make sure that makes the cut. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so what Toledo business would people most likely be able to find you at? Uh, Toledo Mud Hens, Toledo Walleye. You'll, you'll be able to find me here. Um, so I, it's been really cool because I, I normally work like a nine to five here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I go to some, I go to like select games or whatever, but like if you had one place to find me, downtown at the ballpark, downtown at the arena, you can definitely find me there. Uh, or at like an Anthony Wayne middle school uh, football or basketball game or something because <laughs> I, my daughter's a cheerleader. So like I'm, I'm at those watching. So you know, sure. I guess those are a couple of <laughs> a couple ridiculous places you could find me yeah. no it's great everyone can get the sense that you're a supportive dad it's yeah. perfect um, so going in that same vein of changing the reputation and the perception mm -hmm. of Toledo if Toledo had a new motto what would it be I, I actually I love that you'll do better in Toledo mm -hmm. I, I, I do love that right um, I don't know about a motto I, I think because th those are I'm not very good at like making head like headlines. I've mm -hmm. always been terrible at writing headlines. I've always Me been terrible. <laughs> like for some for some reason, like I'm very, I'm a creative person and I can come up with cool stuff. But headlines and like catchy phrases, it's just never been my thing. I've always kind of sucked at that. And I don't know why. I mean, there's a reason big journalism companies hire people just to do <laughs> Literally that. Literally just to do it's that. It's so difficult. It's hard to do. I'm not <laughs> good at it. We're, like we're trying to actually rename a party space here at the ballpark, and they're like, you know, has anybody got any ideas? And I'm like, eh? No, <laughs> no yeah, I don't. No. Like, somebody else come up with one, and I'll just run with it. And I can go on camera and I'll talk about it. Right. But I'm not good at like being the person that actually comes up with a catchy phrase. Like the roost, I never would have thought about that, and it's right. like an it's like an iconic view here in minor league baseball. Like I never would have thought of that. Right. I'm bad at that stuff, so. I don't know, circle back with me. Maybe by the end of this thing, I'll have something better. For you. I don't know. <laughs> if yeah. not, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You're more than welcome to just keep the motto we currently have because yeah. it is a pretty good motto. It's a good one. I like it. Um, all right. So I want to talk about underrated and overrated things okay. in Toledo. What do you think is the most underrated and the most overrated? God, you're going to get me in trouble. I might. You're gonna get, <laughs> you are going to get me in trouble here. 
I feel terrible saying this. I might get my Toledo membership card revoked. <laughs> I've always thought Tony Paco's was a little overrated. Mm, Rudy's Just, fan, I get it. Yeah, I'm a Rudy's guy. <laughs> um, but I do love Paco's, and I go over there, you know, like once a month. I do go over, I promise. I, I like Paco's. I do. I, I like it very much. I think it's the fact that people have built it up for so long. Right. Uh, that it's, it's, maybe we built it up a little too much. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's very good. It's, but it's, it's you know, it's not, it's not what everybody makes it out I, I, I don't want to say makes it out to be, but it's just been built up for it's very hard to reach that bar that we've set for Paco's for sure um, and that's probably our own fault for setting the bar so high I was um, going to say Paco's yeah. isn't even to blame that's us yeah, that, yeah, it's, it's not their fault it's <laughs> right. us we have but it is a really cool place I love Paco's and for I tell sure. people all the time when they come in town you got to try it at least yeah underrated um does it have to like, does it have to be See, restaurant? Does it have to be a restaurant? Mm -hmm. It can no? be anywhere. Okay. Um, or it can be a thing, like an event or something else. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay, okay. I think underrated is probably, like, honestly, our metro parks. I think we don't, we aren't tooting the horn on that nearly enough. For sure. Honestly, our metro parks are sweet. Like, we've got some cool freaking places here. Absolutely. That people need to get out to and... Go walk, take your dog, go by yourself, ride your bike. Like, I, I just think there's there's so many places. Even like in Waterville, like past where Rouge de Bouffe Bridge is, there's there's the trail that goes all the way out to Grand Rapids. I love riding my bike and just going ten miles down, and it's amazing. And the views at like the River Bend and and stuff. Those are maybe I go back to my view. That's one of them. Um, the, there's just so many cool places. The, the metro parks are very much underrated. Yeah, yeah I'll definitely. Go with that. Yeah. Um, I hate to ask you this, but I have to. Okay, do it. Do you have a favorite local sports team and a favorite national sports team? Ooh. Um, I, my favorite local sports team. It's got to be the walleye. I, of mud, course. I mean, mud ends or walleye. Like it's flip a coin depending on the season. I personally, I'm a hockey guy. I always right. have been. I love hockey. Um, I do love baseball too. I've coached baseball. I've played baseball. Like I love it. I'll go with the walleye just because I love the atmosphere over there. They're just a blast. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite national team, it just depends on the season. So I'm a huge Michigan football fan, huge Tigers fan. I love Tigers baseball. When they're, when they're good, there's almost nothing better. Love the Red Wings. Um, so I would say, but Michigan football is kind of like, I kind of turn into a monster during Michigan football games. I don't like who I become. I'm like a, I'm just a total psycho, and I <laughs> like clear the house. I have to like be sitting in my chair by myself just for, during big games. Like have to be sitting in my chair, focused on one thing and one thing only. It's kind of ridiculous. Absolutely, no, it's fair. I mean, I think Michigan sports, especially, get people really riled yeah. up. I've yeah, noticed for sure. so. For sure. Um, and that's dangerous to admit in some OSU territory. Yeah. No, I. Um, I, I get it. Um, I'm, I'm surrounded by Buckeye fans. Uh, Kennedy is 12 and knows already that she wants to go to Ohio State. Um, my dad's a huge Buckeye fan. I, I get it. Like we're split here, and I just that's you side just have I chose. to be the black sheep of the family. Yeah, I chose I chose what I chose, and I've stuck with it. <laughs> so, where in Toledo would you go to find inspiration? Ooh, um, I think. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like, again, I'm going to go back to the parks. Like, I could go sit at, at one of our metro parks and read a book. I can go sit and um, ride, I can go ride my bike. I can go for a walk. That's just kind of, that's kind of my, like my getaway space where I go and I just kind of unwind and I don't think about anything else. And so I would say inspiration would probably be at one of our parks. Um, again, out by Rouge de Bouffe. Um, in Waterville, down the old trail, right, the old Anthony Wayne Trail, mm -hmm. that space out there is just amazing. I love it out there so much. Um, you know, there's deer, there's all sorts of other little rodents running around, <laughs> um, but like it's chill and there's water. And I, I like being on the water. Honestly, that's like, give me water and I'm good. Like I like, For sure. I like, I could just sit and watch water just like ripple, and I'm happy. Yeah. Um, so that's probably. Just somewhere along our waterways, which we have incredible waterways that mean a lot to what we do here, and we're very fortunate to have. 
Um, so yeah, probably something like that. Definitely. And my last question for you is another hard one. Gosh. Who is the Toledo in that you most admire? Whew. I know you've worked with some pretty cool people and you've met some pretty great people in I the have. area, so I know that's a tough question. So, and I promise you, I'm not saying this because you're sitting across from me. Oh, I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> it's, it's funny. <laughs> If I ever have a problem in my life, if I have a dilemma, if I have a question, if I'm faced with a tough decision, the person that I always turn to is your mom, Chris Peterson, because Chris has been, I've, just, I've always loved her. She's just the best. Every time though that I have like tough advice, other than like my mom and dad, like I, right, of they, would, they would be one and two because uh, I love them. But outside of that, like Chris is just, I love that lady. Like I, I'm like emotional because she's just she's always been so good to me. And when I got hired at TOL, she was so cool. When I left TOL, she was even better. And so I, I've always I've always loved her. God, that's terrible. Yikes. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's so sweet, and I yeah. know she'll appreciate yeah. hearing it. She. She'll she make is. fun of me probably. <laughs> no, she loves you. It, I mean, uh, she does have such an impact in the yeah, area and it's, it's she does. really, it's incredible She's to done watch. a lot of great things here. And I love that she was, she came here as an outsider. She wasn't from Salido. Mm -hmm. And I've heard stories that, uh, that she didn't think she was going to stay and Toledo kind of sucked her in. Yep. Toledo does that to a lot of people though. Like it's, Toledo is such a cool place right? and it, you know, there's hockey players I love it because there's hockey guys that will come here and they, you know, they're from freaking Saskatchewan. You know, they, they don't, uh, Saskatoon, like they, they don't know anything about Toledo and they come here and then they like start to like embrace the place and then they realize, oh wait, like I can start a family here. I can live here for the rest of my life. Um, and there's a lot of hockey players that have done that over the years um, because this place, you know, the place will, it wraps its arms around you. and. and it's a uh, it's it's a cool spot, and you can make a family here. You can make a really good life. Cost of living isn't crazy. There's so many good things about this city, um, and I think your mom kind of she kind of epitomizes all of the good that is this city. Yeah. Well, that's very sweet of you to say, and I agree. There's a lot that's wonderful about yeah. this city, and it is very easy to get sucked in once mm -hmm. you're here. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have for you. Unless there's anything else that you want our listeners to know about you, or you know about your Toledo loves. No, I, I think I, I think we kind of covered the gamut. I uh, I, I am I'm a big baby. I'm, I I I get you know I cry about everything. Um, I am. I'm so soft. It's terrible. And I think as I get older, I keep getting worse and worse. Like I'm almost 40 now and I'm like, and everything just kind of sets me off. But yeah. No, I think that's good. Yeah. It's healthy. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully like I'm, I'm certainly not afraid to, um, to show my emotions. I, and, and Jerry would also be part of that. But Jerry's a BG guy. I don't think he's not a Toledo, but he's a BG guy. Jerry Anderson, yes, to be clear. Yes, yes. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I should have clarify that yeah, he's a bg guy i wouldn't want to call him a, i wouldn't call him a toledo guy he might not like that you know <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for coming on the show jordan wow. it was so nice to talk with you i, I appreciate it thanks for having me and hopefully uh, some people will click on this thing and um get a little better sense of where who i am and if they even care I don't know, <laughs> for even, sure yeah. and also make sure that you follow jordan on social media he's very active on all forms but mostly twitter for yeah, sure <laughs> I, i'm a twitter guy i always have been uh, and I still, I'm still calling it that and you, you can't make me change. So there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Toledo According to podcast. Make sure to check out Toledo City Paper in print and online, as well as all of the publications under Adam Street Publishing, including Mature Living, Toledo Area Parent, Ann Arbor Family, Current, and Finley Living. Find us on social media or connect with us if you have any story ideas to share.